We are now in the second episode of the human evolution. If you've seen the first episode, you got to know Australopithecus. Archaeologists prove with different fossils that the next step in human evolution after Australopithecus is Homo habilis. When the story of primates reaches Homo habilis, with the help of the fossils, you could tell there is a bunch of differences from Australopithecus. To understand the story of human evolution better, we have to know that the modern human, meaning us, is called the Homo sapien. Homo means man and sapien means wise. So Homo sapien means wise man. But this episode is dedicated to Homo habilis that comes after Australopithecus. So what does Homo habilis mean? Just like we said, Homo means man and habilis means able. When they named the Homo habilis this name, they didn't know that the Australopithecus could also build tools back then. If they noticed this earlier, they might have named Australopithecus habilis. Either way, the human we're gonna talk about today is called the Homo habilis, and they didn't change the name, so it remained. The Homo habilis is found in the southern and eastern Africa, because that's where the fossils were found. The first human, meaning the Australopithecus, lived from two to two and a half million years ago. And Homo habilis is up next at about one and a half to two million years ago. Archaeologists know Homo habilis, the next step after Australopithecus. And the age of the fossils shows us that the habilis came after these guys. It's also obvious that between the ages of these two, meaning 500,000 to 1 million years, evolution did its job, and Homo habilis is much more able and better than the Australopithecus, both in terms of body and intelligence. Some ask, is it possible for a species to turn into a different one? But they never realize that the evolution takes 500,000 to over 1 million years. It's not like evolution happens in 10, 100, or 1,000 years. The biggest difference between the Homo habilis and the Australopithecus is the snout area. And from the difference, you can clearly see that it's much smaller now. You could clearly tell that the front of the face is much flatter than before. On the other hand, the eyebrow bridge is much smaller and slimmer. One of the things that did not change between the Australopithecus and the habilis is the nose, because it's still a flat nose rather than the human type nose where it comes out and has bones. Even though the Homo habilis is called the abled man, but it wasn't that much more able than the Australopithecus. It would also use rocks and wood to create tools, but not anything more complicated than the Australopithecus. But do you know what's the biggest difference in terms of ability between these two? The biggest difference is that the Australopithecus was very rare for it to make tools, but for the Homo habilis, it was very common to build these tools. So you could say you would have to be a genius Australopithecus to be able to build different types of stone tools. So when Lucy was living, it was very rare for them to have a skill like this. A lot of scientists believe that the Homo habilis didn't really need to innovate to make better tools. They would sharpen stone and turn it into different types of tools like knives, arrows, and hammers. The innovation that the Homo habilis used continued for the next hundreds of thousands of years. So it shows us that they didn't need to work harder to make the tools better. Some people ask, how do they put a difference between chimpanzees and ancient primates? First of all, the fossils prove a lot of different things throughout evolution. With the help of the fossils, it's very obvious that these animals would not walk on all four, but they would rather walk. Another huge difference you see between monkeys and ancient primates is the power of their shoulder, which we talked about in the previous video. And it's also good to know that Homo habilis shoulder is even weaker than the Australopithecus. Another thing that's different is that they stand more upright, 
so their spine is more straight. But they're still not as straight as a modern human. In our previous clip, we said the Australopithecus has an average height of 1 meter. But as you can clearly see, the Homo habilis grew by a lot. And they have an average height of about 1.6 meters. And their weight gain by 10 kilograms. So they have an average weight of 50 kilos. Another huge difference you'll see in this primate is that it has longer legs and its arm does not hang as low as his knees anymore. The longer legs allowed him to walk more straight and run faster. Lucy or other Australopithecus could not run very fast. The reason Australopithecus couldn't run fast is because they were very top heavy and their legs were short and small. So let's talk about the most important body part, the brain. What's the difference between those two? We first have to say that the size of the brain doesn't determine how smart a species is. Like for example, an elephant has a ginormous brain. It's smart, but it's not that smart. You have to compare the body size to the brain ratio. And Homo habilis, compared to its body size, it had a rather large brain. Just the same way where the Homo habilis grew in size and weight, its brain also grew. You could see the size difference with the help of their skulls as well. Homo habilis is much less clumsy than the Australopithecus, and in terms of finding food and hunting, it could think longer and better. You could imagine that the Australopithecus didn't use his brain power as hard as the Homo habilis. When scientists inspect the Australopithecus skull, you'll see that the size of its brain was about 400 cubic centimeters. But when you look at the Homo habilis, it's about 600 cubic centimeters. Australopithecus male to female size was not much different, but when you get to early Homo habilis, they get very different in sizes, and the males grow much larger. This is something you see in gorillas, because a male gorilla is usually hundreds of kilograms larger than the female gorilla. But when you get into the later Homo habilis, meaning hundreds of thousands of years, the male and female size become very similar. And scientists believe that this size difference continues to this day. The more you move forward with the Homo habilis, its snout gets smaller, the eyebrow bridge gets thinner, and its face gets flatter, and its nose also starts to form to look more like a human. And of course, its brain power is becoming more complex and more powerful. Luis and Mary Leakey were the first people to find the Homo habilis skull, and that was in the year 1955. Most of the information we gave about the Homo habilis was based of the different fossils that they found with the help of different archaeological work. And Raymond Dart was the first person to use the Greek work habilis on this type of primate. And just like we said, Habilis is a Greek word for able, or you could also call it sufficient ability, power, or skillful. For the Homo habilis to stay alive, it had to use its IQ. The Homo habilis had a lot of enemies where it lived. Predators like hyenas, leopards, saber-toothed tigers, and different types of crocodile. So in this type of a lifestyle, the Homo habilis was forced to use its brain to stay alive longer. You could say the pressure this creature put on its brain helped it to evolve to get smarter and smarter. We have to move to about 1 million years ago when the habilis reaches its evolution and they turn into the Homo erectus. But that's for the next episode.